What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to code a simple pawn game in python so let us get right into it all right so this project is going to have around 150 lines of code which is why we're not going to talk about all the lines in the most detail possible we don't want this video to be two hours so what we need to do first here is we need to open up a command line and we need to say pip install pygame or conda install pygame or pip3 install pygame however you install your packages and then we need to say import pygame this is the only module that we're going to need we're not going to need any other module just import pygame and that's it so first of all we're going to define some constants and variables those are just things like the speed of the paddles the speed of the ball the colors uh, the dimensions of the game itself and so on. So first of all, we're going to say white is a triple, which is 255, 255, 255, just the RGB values. Black is going to be 0, 0, 0 then. The width is going to be 600. And the height is going to be 600 as well. You can change these if you want to. Um, then we're going to say pygame.init. And we're going to also choose a font, which is going to be pygame. Actually, let's call this game font. It's going to be pygame.font, sys font. I'm going to choose Ubuntu here and I'm going to choose font size 40. So after that, we're going to also choose some values for the individual game mechanics, you could say. So the speed, the delay, the, the dimensions of the individual object. So first of all, we're going to say delay equals 30. Uh, this number, if you increase it, it's going to slow down the game. If you decrease it, it's going to be faster. It's like FPS. I'm not even sure if that's not the FPS value. So maybe we can call this FPS, but I would like to call it delay because, uh, or actually it's not FPS. It's like the opposite of the FPS, you could say, because if you increase the delay, the game is going to be slower. That's the basic idea behind it. So besides that, we're going to say paddle speed is going to be uh, 20. I have to look at the values here because I chose them and I, I cannot remember them because they're like uh, depending on each other. So we're going to say paddle width is going to be 10. Paddle height is going to be 100. And then we need to calculate the position. So we want to have the screen and on the left and on the right in the center, we want to have the two paddles and then we want to have the ball in the exact middle of the screen. So we're going to say player one X position or paddle one X position, whatever you want to call it equals 10 and the paddle one Y position is going to be the height divided by two, which is the center. But then we need to also uh, take into account that the pedal itself, the position of the pedal is not like the center exactly. So we need to actually subtract the pedal height divided by two so that we actually have the pedal in the center of uh, the screen, or at least in the center of the uh, vertical axis. Then we're going to do the same for player two. But here we're going to not choose 10, but we're going to choose the width minus the pedal width minus 10, like that. And of course we need to change this to two and we need to change this to two as well. There you go. Then of course we have the score. We need to say the player one score is going to be zero. And so is going to be the player two score. And then I'm going to also use some variables here, some booleans that indicate if we're moving up or down right now. Now this might not be the most intelligent way to do that. Uh, I'm aware of that, but I'm not really a game developer. I'm just a Python programmer who, happens to use some pie, pie game here and then. Uh, but what I thought is I'm going to do like P1 up. Uh, P1 up is going to be false in the beginning. So it's going to be false. And so it's going to be P1 down and P2 up and so on. So we're going to say P1 up, P1 down, then P1, uh, P2 ups actually. So P2 up and P2 down. All of those are going to be false like that. Um, and basically if you change direction, it's going to be true. And depending on that, you know, when you release the key, it's going to be false again. Uh, but depending on that, we can, we can control so that we don't 
uh, keep going up or down endlessly. Now, maybe that's not the most intelligent way to do it, but this is just how I did it. And then last but not least, we're also going to place the ball. So we're going to say ball X position is going to be the width divided by two. And the ball Y position is going to be the height divided by two. Now, since this is going to be a circle, uh, that's perfectly fine. We don't need to subtract or add anything because uh, the circle, the position of the circle is going to be the center of the circle. So uh, that's no problem here. And then we're going to say ball width is going to be, I chose eight here. And then the ball X velocity in the beginning uh, is important because in the beginning, when the game starts, like when we press start, we want the ball to go into one direction. So we either want it to go to the left or to the right it has to start in some direction. And we're just going to have it go to the left, which is negative 10. So it's going to go to the left with a velocity of negative 10. Or actually, it's going to go to the left with a velocity of 10, which is in fact, a velocity of negative 10. Uh, and it's not going to have any y velocity. So it's going to just have zero y velocity like that. So those are the basic constants and variables for the beginning. So next, we're going to define a function, which is going to draw all the individual objects onto the gaming screen. So we're going to draw the ball, we're going to draw the paddles, and we're also going to update the score using the font. So for this, we're first going to need a screen, which we're going to draw all these things onto. So we're going to say screen equals pi game dot display dot set mode, and we're going to pass a tuple with width and height like that. Then we're going to add a comment drawing objects. And for this, we're going to use a function because we're going to call it over and over again. And the function is going to be called draw objects. Inside of it, we're going to say pi game dot draw. And we're going to draw a rectangle. So pi game dot draw rect. And we're going to draw onto the screen in white color. And we're going to pass a tuple now with four values, we're going to pass first the x position, then the y position, then the width and then the height. So we're going to say integer of p1 x position, integer of p2, uh, not p2, p1 y position. And then we're going to pass paddle width, width, and then paddle height. So that's it. Now we're using this integer typecasting function here because the position is calculated using a division. So if we end up with a floating point number, we want to have an integer again, because otherwise we're going to get an exception here. So that is the basic uh, pi game rectangle, we're going to copy this now and we're going to just replace all the p ones with p twos. And then so basically p one p two, there you go. So just here p two and p two. And then we also draw this paddle, then we're going to say pi game dot draw dot circle. And a circle is also drawn onto the screen, it's also going to be white, but here we now only need to pass three values, which is x position, y position and the width of the ball, uh, which is like the diameter or the radius. So here we say ball x position ball y position. Now, if we keep the if we keep the actual dimensions that we have here, we don't need to typecast into an integer because, you know, 600 divided by two is just going to be 300. So that's not an issue. But uh, if you want to go, uh, if you want to be sure that you're not passing any floating point numbers, you can still typecast it into an integer. And then once we have that, we're going to pass the ball width, but this one is going to be actually what is the ball width for us? It's eight. So we also don't need to typecast that into an integer. So once we have that, we're going to define the score, the score is going to be game font dot render. And we're going to create a string here, we're going to take the string of the p one score, or actually, we can use an f string here. So let's do f string, we're going to say, um, string of p one score. And then string of p two score, like that. And 
then false and white. Then last but not least, we're going to say screen dot blit score. And we're going to place it at the position with minus uh, divided by two, not minus, um, which is the center and 30. So X and Y. That's it. Of course, you can also add or subtract a little bit from that number so that it's actually in the center because of course, the score um, is going to be a text that doesn't have a width of zero. So it's not going to be completely centered here. But that is the basic draw object function. Next up, we're going to implement a function which is responsible for the application of the player movement. And for this, we're going to say def apply player movement. And the important thing in that function is that we guarantee that the paddle is not going to go out of the boundaries of the screen. So what we have to do here is we need to say, uh, first of all, we need to make the positions global, we need to say p1 y position and p2 y position have to be global, which means that we can actually influence them in that function. Um, and we're not going to care about the x positions because the only actions that we can take are going up and down. And we're now going to use the booleans that I defined up here to, uh, to determine whether or not or to determine the position, the direction in which the paddles are moving. So if they're not moving any uh, anywhere, all of these are going to be false. If we're moving up by pressing the up key or moving down by pressing the down key, we're going to have these set to true. So based on that, we're going to actually apply the movement, we're going to say if player one up, if that is the case, we're going to say the player one y position is going to be and the basic idea is that we have the player y position being decreased by the paddle speed, of course, because with each iteration, we're just going to move into the direction that I'm pressing um, into that direction using the paddle speed. However, if we get to zero, we don't want to be able to proceed further. So we're going to say the maximum number of that and zero, so we cannot go below zero. Um, we can do the same thing then for p1 down. But here we need to take care of the maximum. So we need to say, uh, player y position is going to be player one y position, plus the paddle speed. But we're not going to be allowed to get further than the height. So we're going to say the minimum value of either that or height. And then we're going to do the same thing, the exact same thing for player two. So I'm going to change player one here to player two. There you go. Just change all the ones down here to twos. Uh, and that's basically the application of the movements. All right, so now we're going to get to the most confusing part of this video, which is the application of the ball movement. And we're not going to do an accurate physics simulation here, but the movement of the ball has to be intuitively right, it has to feel right. Now I'm going to show you again what I mean by that. If I run the, um, the game that I have already coded, you can see that if the ball hits the paddle right in the middle, it's going to just go horizontally. But if I hit it more with the top, it's going to go up. If I hit it more with the bottom, it's going to go down. Even though it's not the most accurate thing, it still feels right. So it doesn't feel uh, too wrong. So that's important, we need to take care of that. And for this, we're going to need a function with some mathematics. Now I choose I chose some values here, they're not going to be, you know, they might feel kind of random to you, you can fine tune them if you want to. But the game that you just saw are uh, is is coded with those values. So we're going to say, def apply ball movement. And here I'm going to put in the code that I have already written. Now I have to look at it a couple of times because those calculations and if statements are quite long, they make sense, I'm going to explain them to you. But still, in, uh, in order to not make any mistakes, I'm going to just look at the code that I have written here already. So first of all, we need to make all these values that we're going to change global and we're going to change the ball x position, we're going to change the ball y position, we're going to change the ball x velocity and we're going to change the ball y velocity. And we're also going to change the player scores. So if the ball gets out on one side without hitting the pedal, the other player gets a point. So p1 score has to be changed 
and P2 score has to be changed. So let's start with the first scenario. The first scenario is that the ball hits the paddle on the right uh, on the left side. So player one hits the ball with the paddle. If that happens, what we want to do is we want to reverse the X velocity. So if it's going with a certain velocity to the left, we want to reverse that velocity so that it goes to the right. And depending on the position uh, where it hits the paddle, it has to go up or down. So we're going to say, first of all, if the ball X position that it's currently at plus the ball X velocity, so we want to do it before that, before it goes too far, if that is less than the player one X position, so if it's going uh, behind the paddle plus the paddle width, width like that but it is also in a position where it actually hits the paddle so the y coordinates are actually um, in the range of the paddle so if the p1 y position is less than the ball y position which is uh, plus the velocity again plus ball y velocity plus the ball width, of course. And that is less than the P1 Y position plus the paddle height. So basically, again, what I said, we have the paddle. And if this ball is going through the paddle or through the through the Y coordinate, uh, X coordinate actually of the paddle, but it's still in the range of the paddle height. If that is the case, this is the case that we're talking about right now. If that is the case, we're going to reverse the velocity of the ball. So the X velocity is going to be the negative X velocity. So ball X velocity is going to be minus X velocity. And then we're going to also calculate the Y velocity. And for this, we're going to say ball Y velocity is going to be depending on the position where it hits the paddle. So we're going to say P1 Y position plus paddle height divided by two, which is the center. In, in case it hits the center, it's going to result in zero, which is zero movement of, uh, so it's not going to change the y, uh, y velocity of the, of the ball, minus the, um, minus the y position of the ball. So basically, if the position of the ball hits the middle of the pedal, so if the ball hits the middle of the pedal, it's not going to change uh, the velocity at all, or it's going to put it to zero, that's probably the right way of putting it. And otherwise, it's going to go up or down. And in order to not make this effect too extreme, we're going to divide by 50. Again, I said the numbers might feel sort of random. Um, you can change them, you can put some more logic into them, maybe they're not completely uh, accurate when you look at the physics. Uh, but you can change them as I said, and then we're going to say, uh, this has to be reversed, obviously. So ball y velocity is going to be negative ball y velocity. So this was the one case. All right, so the next case is that the ball actually hits the wall on the left. So it's not going to the pedal, it's going to the wall, and player two has to get a point. So in this case, we're going to say elif ball x position plus ball x velocity is less than zero. So we actually hit the wall and go beyond that. If that is the case, we're going to increase the score of player two by one. And we're going to recenter the ball. So the ball has to be in the middle again. So we're going to say ball X position is going to be uh, X was the horizontal. So we're going to have the width divided by two. Now, in this case, it actually doesn't matter because it's always 300. Um, but so we can make it a little bit more customizable or we can change the values without having to change the whole code. Um, and the Y position is going to be height divided by two. The velocity in the X direction is going to be the velocity that we have in the beginning, which is, uh, what was it, negative 10, but it's going to go into the direction of the one who actually uh, scored the point. So if player two scores a point, then the ball is going to start moving to player two. So we're going to say, in this case, that it's 10. And the y velocity is going to be reset to zero. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. So we're going to say, 
is going to be the almost same code, but it's going to have some differences. So if the ball x position plus the ball x velocity, and in this case, we're going to say is larger than the player two x position because we're going to the right minus the paddle width. So if it's hit the pad, if it hits the paddle on the right, but it's still in the range of the uh, of the paddle height, if that is the case. So if p2 y position is less than the ball y position plus the ball y velocity plus the ball width like that. And that whole thing is less than p2 y position plus paddle height. So again, the same logic that we have up here. So that part is actually the same. Only the part on the left is a little bit different because here we're going to the right. So we need to uh, check for greater than and here we're going to the left. So we need to check for less than. If that is the case, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to say the ball x velocity is going to be reversed. And the ball y velocity is going to depend on where it hits the paddle. So ball y velocity is going to be again p2 y position plus pedal height divided by two minus ball y position divided by 15. And we're going to say ball y velocity is negative ball y velocity. Because of course, if we hit the pedal at the top, it should also go to the top and it should not just go down. That would not make sense intuitively uh, as well as physically. And again, we're going to say elif the ball x position plus the ball x velocity. So if we go out on the right side, if that is larger than the height, then player one is going to get a score plus equals one. And actually, we can copy these lines here because we're going to recenter the ball, but it is going to go into the negative direction. So it's going to go to the left since player one scored right now. And last but not least, what do we do if the ball hits the top or the bottom, then it's just going to uh, go back from there. So it's going to say if ball y position plus ball y velocity is larger than height, or if the ball y position plus the ball y velocity is less than zero, then the only thing that we need to do is we need to reverse the uh, the y velocity. So we need to say ball y velocity is going to be negative ball y velocity. That's all we need to do. And last but not least, we actually need to make the move. So depending on where the ball is and uh, what velocity it has, we need to make the actual step, the actual move. And this is done by ball x position plus equals ball x velocity and ball y position plus equals ball y velocity. All right, so we're almost done with the game. The only thing that we need to do now is we need to set up the game loop. And for this, we're going to start by first setting the title of the game, pygame.title is going to be neural pong, neural pong version 0 0.1 alpha, for example, call it whatever you want. Then screen dot fill, we're going to fill it with black color. Um, and then we're going to say pi game display flip like that. After that, we say running equals true. And while running, we're going to react to the keyboard inputs of the players because one player is going to navigate with up and down with the arrow keys and one is going to be navigating with W and S. I mean, we could theoretically with a lot more work do it uh, via sockets, but we're going to do this locally on one keyboard right now. And we're going to say for event in pi game event get. We're going to say if event type is pi game dot quit. So if we just quit, we're going to say running equals false. If the event type on the other hand is key down, pi game dot key down, if that is the case, we're going to react to the individual key presses. So if the event key is equal to pi game dot k escape, 
we're going to also quit. So we're going to say running equals false and thus break the loop. Now, if the event key is not escape, uh, but one of the movement keys, so if the key is, for example, KW, like that, then we're going to signal that player one is moving up. And in order to do that, we're going to use the booleans that I define up here. Because remember, depending on those four booleans, this apply movement function is going to apply the movement. So we're going to say, if I press W, player one is moving up. So I'm going to say player one up equals true. It's going to stay true or remain true unless I release that key. This is what we're going to take care of in a second. If event key is pygame.ks, P1 down is going to be true. If event key pygame, uh, what is up? Up is just up like that. Player two up is going to be true. And if event key equals pygame k down, player two down is going to be true. So in order to make those false again, we need to release the key because unless we release the key, they're going to stay true. But if we just release it like that, it's going to stay true anyway. So we need to actually also catch the event of releasing a key. So we need to say if event type equals pygame dot, um, what was it, key up, there you go. If it's key up, which means that we're releasing a key, then we're actually going to copy all of this here. And we're going to set all of these to false. Now, this is actually not important, the escape key. But I'm going to just replace all the trues here by false. There you go. So the moment we release the key, it gets to false. And now the only thing that we need to do is we need to actually uh, update the screen and we need to do all the functions. So we need to say screen fill black with each iteration. Then we need to apply the movement. So we need to apply the player movement. We need to apply the ball movement. This is all mathematical. We haven't plotted anything yet. We haven't drawn anything yet. But once the movement is applied, we call the draw objects function. And then we display all of this. So pygame.display.flip. And now is where the delay comes into play because now we say pygame.time.wait delay. And that is the whole game. So let's see if it works. This is the right main. Uh, there you go. No, we have a problem. Has no attribute title. Oh, yeah. We need to say not title, but we need to say display caption. So pygame.display.set caption like that. But besides that, this should work. There you go. As you can see, the basics work. So let's see if the physics also work. Yes, they work. There you go. Let's see if we can score a point. There you go. It works as well. Yeah. As you can see, this is how you build a simple Pong game in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.